Well, next I want to turn. Next I want to turn to uh, Barbara, and she has a few remarks to make, uh, also reflecting upon 50 years. So, Barbara, take it away. Uh, I normally don't like to talk from prepared talk, but there's things I wanted to say to you, and there's very limited time, so I thought I'd better write some of it out. I try to grasp it. It's been 50 years since the publication of Atlas Shrugged, and it just isn't real. It's as if that period is, is, has been made into a movie, and I'm watching it on a camera. And, one of the, and it's black and white mostly, except for one evening when Ian and Frank and Nathaniel and I, just a few days before the official publication, went to the Random House window, which fronted on, on Madison Avenue, to see if the book was there, if they displayed it, because they did display uh, their big books in advance of publication. And there it was. And the four of us stood looking at it. It was the first time we had seen the book outside of our own private world, which was Ian's apartment. And here it was out in the world, this book that, that had been our life for years. There it was out in the world, and we just stood staring. And I blurted out, that's us. <laughs> And I realized later, I could have taken that as terribly presumptuous. I mean, I hadn't written the book. But <laughs> I felt almost as if I had. But she understood what I meant, and she, she laughed, and she said, yes, that's us. And she often commented on that remark in the years after that she had really liked it. Um, that evening was a very special one, and I see that one on the camera, and there's another one I see. The evening that Ian came, almost reeling out of her study, carrying this enormous manuscript that seemed to reach to the ceiling, plunked it down on a table, opened the last page, which said the end, and said, one word leads to another. <laughs> <laughs> it was finished. It was finally done. And that was the most wonderful evening. And as Nathaniel said, um, we'd been part of that book from, the, from almost the beginning. I think it was about, what, a third through when we began reading it in manuscript? When we began reading yeah, it? Yeah, about uh, a third. Uh, we began reading it when we were still in UCLA, yes. and I think it was uh, about chapter 18 when the book was in two parts, uh, 20 and 10. That would now be eight in, in the new yeah. version. So we were there almost from the beginning, and we spent, I mean, we had spent days and hours and weeks and months discussing the ideas, discussing the characters. They had become almost reality to us. I mean, uh, Hank Reardon, to me, was as real as the people I sat with in class. <laughs> Probably more real. I, under I understood him infinitely better than I did the people in class. <laughs> and we had suffered with Ian through the writing of it which was very, very difficult for her. She'd had a lot of distractions, which made her terribly tense. Business distractions, personal distractions, all kinds. And it took her years longer to write it than she thought. Galt's speech was, it took her two years and was complete hell for her. The hardest thing she ever wrote in her life. Because what she was trying to do was take abstract philosophy and put it in the terms of a novel. And that is hard. And she did the best she was able. And when it, when it was over, during that period, during those years of real struggle, she had become very irritable, very tense, very condemning. Life had been hard for her. But finally, when the speech was finished, and she was really happy with it, then she was writing the completion of the novel, which was mostly action. And that she loved writing and really enjoyed. And we just saw her blossom. And it was wonderful to see. And now we're all looking forward to publication. And as Nathaniel said, we were very sane and very sensible about the fact that we could not expect immediate change in the culture. That's not how things happen. We knew that. And we assured each other very solemnly. And as he said, none of us believed it for a minute. <laughs> we thought this was going to be a thunderclap and would sort of change the world overnight, or at least begin it. And 
during that period before publication, we saw something wonderful happening to Ayan. For the first time since we'd known her, she was living in the moment. She was enjoying day by day. Always before it had been, life starts when I complete the book. Life starts when this is done, when this is done. Now it was the moment that she was enjoying. And she would spend hours at her study reading the manuscript, not to edit it, but what she said she was doing was just gloating, just enjoying <laughs> it. <laughs> and it was such a joy to see that after the years of struggle she had gone through. So we waited for publication. And it was awful. It could not have been worse. The reviews, we knew there'd be negative reviews. We were prepared for that. We weren't prepared for what seemed like an outpouring of hatred and of distortion and of lies about the book. I mean, to hear, I, to hear a woman whose main political idea was that no man may initiate the use of force, to hear her called a fascist, we almost couldn't get it into our heads that this was possible. She was called everything under the sun. Uh, that she was treated with no respect whatever. Her literary achievement was either ignored or, or disputed. Uh, it was considered a bad book literarily. Now, there were some good reviews. But in the major publications, well, there was National Review and Whitaker Chambers saying that on every page of this book, I hear the order to the gas chamber go. How does one integrate that? How did I integrate that? The sales in the beginning were very slow. It looked like the book wasn't going to make it. It wasn't going to be a success. Bennett Cerf later said that he was struggling not to tell Ian that he thought the book was going to be a failure. Ian was reeling, as I say, from all of this. She, it was a, a soul shriveling response to the writing of Atlas Shrugged. She had expected negatives. She had known there would be negatives. That book motivated so many people to reach for the best within them, to try and be the best they could be. It didn't motivate them to defend the person who had taught them this. It told businessmen not only that theirs was the 